Good morning, Calvary, and welcome to your word for the day. My name is Pastor Mitch, and today we're going to be looking at Exodus chapter 17, verses 1 through 7. And you can read the whole text on your own, but the basis of the story is that the Israelites are following God, and they camp out at a place with no water. And the nation begins to complain to Moses, and Moses begins to freak out. See, Moses begins to stress out over the lack of water. And I'm sure he starts to send out scouts to look for streams or covered wells. And he starts to calculate how much longer the Israelites will have or be able to survive if they don't have water. And maybe he begins to question if God's plan is really the best plan. See, he's looking at a map and he sees that if he had just chosen to go a different direction or if he had just followed his plan instead of God's, then he would have been able to camp out next to some other well or stream. And as he's contemplating what to do and not having any good answers, that's probably about the time that the scouts would have returned to tell Moses that there are no streams or hidden wells nearby to use. And so then we see Moses turn to God in frustration and fear. And picking up in verse 4, we read, Then Moses cried out to the Lord, What am I to do with these people? They are almost ready to stone me. And the Lord answered Moses, Go out in front of the people, take with you some of the elders of Israel, and take in your hand the staff with which you struck the Nile, and go. And I will stand there before you by the rock at Horeb. Strike the rock, and water will come out of it for the people to drink. And so Moses did this in the sight of the elders. You see, what the, what the Israelites forgot was all the times that God had faithfully provided for them in the past from the 10 plagues that freed them from Egypt to the, the parting of the Red Sea, to the manna and the quail he gave them to eat, and all the other times he showed up to, to provide for them. And sometimes we forget God's promises and his provision too. You know, maybe our budget is too tight for us this month since we just got our new RV or boat, so let's just cut our tithe and we'll be good. Or we don't really get that much time as a family, let's just skip out on one more church weekend. Or this dinner was too expensive, and we don't really have the money to be generous and uh, to tip the staff. Or, <laughs> I know I'm supposed to forgive, forgive them, I, but the pain is just too much, and I want to make sure that, that that person knows how upset I am with them. Or, I, I know I haven't spent that much time at home, my spouse, but my, my week is overbooked again, and they'll understand. See, we often forget that God promises to provide us or provide for us everything that we will need to live out the life that he has called us to. And if we find that we don't have enough of something, maybe, just maybe we are simply trying to add too much stuff to our life that isn't really life-giving. Or maybe we need to learn to trust in God and that the plans and in the plans that he has called us to. See, when we follow God's will, God provides. You shouldn't rely on your paycheck. You shouldn't rely on your health or on your savings in retirement. Don't rely on your employees. Our provision comes from God. So the, the Israelites forgot something, but what Moses forgot was that God cares about his people way more than we ever could. You may be doing a great job in following God's will for your life, but sometimes we take too much of the weight of other people's problems, and we put it on our own shoulders. See, God called you to be a part of the church and to love others and to help make disciples, but God didn't call you to be the one to point out everyone else's sin. He didn't call you to be the one to worry about every possible scenario that might put your family in danger and then to set up a plan that will prevent them from any and all harm. He didn't call you to be the one that has the answer to every single problem. God didn't call you to be someone else's savior because they already have one. God called you to love others and to follow him the best that you can because he cares about all those other details and those people more than we ever could. Thank you for tuning in to your word for the day. Like and share this video and we will see you tomorrow.